Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Ozilo, and today we will discuss the financial relations between the Commonwealth and the States. Welcome to our video about fiscal federalism in Australia. Let's start with a more general approach to fiscal federalism. Then we will move to the specifics of the Australian fiscal federalism. Fiscal federalism is an economic concept about understanding how money and power are spread out among the different levels of a federation. It's like a behind the scenes look at how money and authority are divided up within a nation. It's all about understanding the nitty and gritty of revenue allocation, distribution and spending rules that govern the financial game. When we use the term fiscal federalism, we mean the structure and institutions in a federation that deal with the allocation of revenue raised, the distribution of that money, and in what can that money be spent in. Fiscal federalism then refers to the decentralization of revenue and the distribution of the power to regulate economic activities. Fiscal federalism is implicit in the idea of a federation. Because if states are to have any autonomy, if they are to have powers, they must exist in the economic sense. They must be able to do certain things according to the capacity to raise revenue that they have. Studies have shown that when states have both the means to raise the revenue and expend the money in the way they see fit, the government operates better and more efficiently. Alternatively, when a higher level of government collects the money and passes it down to lower levels, which will then spend that money, there is the creation of an illusion that the people, on the end, are not actually paying the bill. Thus, these studies say that democratic accountability is better when those bearing the costs of benefits know they are the ones so and so doing. A well-balanced fiscal federalism leads to more informed and responsive governance. All in all, the whole notion of fiscal federalism is about this dynamic of how money is raised and spent. Now, let's move to the specifics of fiscal federalism in Australia. With the constitution, the federated states were to continue to possess the taxing, borrowing and spending powers they had prior to federation. But now, they also needed to surrender to the federal government the exclusive power to impose duties of custom and of excise. This was expressed in section 90 of the Commonwealth Constitution. Now, the initial setup of the Constitution had a bit of a money bias towards the Commonwealth. The Constitution kind of tilted things towards it. This is called a vertical fiscal imbalance or VFI. The Commonwealth was given a monopoly of customs and excise duties under section 90 and the concurrent power of general taxation according to section 51.2. Ultimately, this meant that the Commonwealth could raise more money than the states. It is true that the states mitigated the VFI by having their own income tax, but this only happened until 1942 when the chiefly Labour government made the income tax a federal monopoly. Now, th there were some historical reasons to grant the Commonwealth more revenue-raising powers than the states. Tariff barriers were a big source of intercolonial rivalry before Federation, so their removal was extremely important coming to the creation of the new Federation. Indeed, one of the primary objectives of the Federation was to establish freedom of trade, commerce and intercourse between the states, which came about through Section 92. In order to achieve this freedom of trade and commerce, it was considered necessary to prohibit the states from imposing customs and excise duties on goods imported into or circulating within each state. And so, the power to impose duties of customs and excise was made an exclusive power of the Commonwealth. However, because taxes on goods had been a major source of revenue for the colonies prior to Federation, this opened up serious questions about their fiscal capacities after the federations. Could the state survive like this? So some provisions were included in the constitution to prevent the Commonwealth from absolutely dominating the state, financially speaking. 
the Commonwealth was expressly prevented from a discriminating between states or parts of states in any law imposing taxation b giving preference to one state or any part of a state through any regulation of trade commerce or revenue and three imposing tax on the property of a state but still the most serious departure from the ideal fiscal federalist model in australia occurs on the revenue and spending side as we mentioned before the capacity and effectiveness of a government depends on its power to raise revenue and the power to spend money in Australia, however, this connection between revenue and spending responsibilities has been fractured primarily due to the usage of Section 96 of the Constitution. We have a video about Section 96, so click the top right corner and watch it. And more, if you do not want to miss any of our videos, click the like button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon as well. You see, the main sources of independent state revenue are limited to employers, payroll taxes, property tax, stamp duty, taxes on goods and services that do not fall within excise duty, taxes on other activities, and in the case of some rich states, well, the royalties for the extraction of minerals. But the bulk of the money still goes to the Commonwealth. So the VFI is still very much present and can be a major aspect of state's dependence on the Commonwealth. One attempt to use that situation to the benefit of the states was the creation of the GST. At a Premier's conference held on 13 November 1998, the governments of the Commonwealth, the states and the territories signed an agreement, which was later given effect by an Act of Parliament, to introduce a 10% goods and services tax, the GST, in Australia. The agreement sought to address the problem of vertical and horizontal imbalance through a commitment to distribute the GST revenue to the states. The constitutional importance of the GST scheme lies in the fact that the grants from the GST are unconditional, allowing the states to determine spending priorities. It is then a different scheme from that when using Section 96 differently from the usage of specific purpose payments or tide grants. The GST is given to any state without any strings attached. Commonwealth is still the one getting the money in, but they distribute it to the states so that the states can use that money for whatever purposes they want. So, to sum up, the big note in terms of the Australian fiscal federalism is this. The constitutional division of powers left the states with prime or exclusive responsibility for almost all domestic governance and service delivery, including healthcare, education and environmental protection. However, other than in a time of war, the Commonwealth's main responsibilities are not so financially burdensome. There is then a disconnect between the highly centralized fiscal arrangements and the generally non-centralized expenditure responsibilities that are given to the states. And this situation is called a vertical fiscal imbalance. And it makes the states heavily reliant on transfers from the Commonwealth to them. Indeed, in Australia, fiscal federalism is burdened by a great level of vertical fiscal imbalance. And since the Commonwealth raises most of the revenue, it distributes to the states this money. It can do so by trying to achieve a level of horizontal fiscal equalization, like in the distribution of GST revenue, or to shape policy in those areas that are otherwise of state jurisdiction, like through the use of Section 96, the tight grants. Ultimately, the scheme favors the Commonwealth as the main revenue raiser and puts the states as subjected to the Commonwealth revenue to deal with the most financially burdensome responsibilities. Now, if you want to know more about some other aspects of the Australian Constitution, check out the video here on the side, and don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel before you go. I'll see you next time. Ciao.